The Uncharted Territories is a podcast about seeing the unseen in the world of matter. Join me, Shara Prophet, the Mind Magic Coach, and my partner, astrologer Scott Tajirian, as we take an esoteric look this season into the life, death, and afterlife of a variety of celebrities and public figures who lost their lives prematurely or unexpectedly. Welcome to the Uncharted Territories. I'm Scott Tajarian with Shara Prophet. Hi, Shara. Hey, Scott. How are you? I'm well. How are you today? Doing well. We're back here uh, discussing Princess Margaret. And where did we leave off, Shara? We were talking about her and her husband, Tony's. Yes. Uh, or ex husband. Yes. Uh, Tony. Tony's relationship. Tony. Yes. Yes. The. The first Earl of Snowden, mm-hmm. Anthony Armstrong Jones, the first Earl of Snowden. That sounds yes. very mystical. <laughs> yes, I know. That's why I said it again. <laughs> it's like, the first Earl of yeah. Snowden. I just got like a visual of like <laughs> some Viking standing in the snow with a sword. <laughs> I know. I know. Yes. That's awesome. So we were talking about their relationship with each other mm-hmm. and how they got together, Yes, his sexuality, mm-hmm. and you made some really good points about Princess Margaret's kind of like duality within mm-hmm. herself, you mm-hmm. know, like how there's that part of her that wants that stability, that, that love and commitment and monogamy, mm-hmm. but then there's the other part of her that wants to explore a little bit and, and wants to kind of get a taste of everything, mm-hmm. you know, and we were talking about the dominant part. Yes. Of of each of each of us, right? Yes. Like how to connect with that dominant part of us so that we can truly create what we want to see. Yes. 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 Well, you know, Margaret, her purpose was to to be in charge, to do what she wanted to do. And she wasn't doing the dominant, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which was the commitment, mm-hmm. the monogamy, the having that person be there for her when she needed him. And so that other part that wasn't dominant became dominant. Yep. And that's when the life spirals out of balance. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And this is this is what also contributed to her many health issues, as mm-hmm. we've seen in the past with our other episodes that what is not dealt with in the emotional and mental body mm-hmm. will show up in the physical body mm-hmm. until we pay attention to it. So yes, that's what happens. Yeah, absolutely. You're given subtle signs. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't pay attention to those signs, then the signs become more prominent. Yeah. And if you don't pay attention to those signs, they start to appear in your body because that's kind of the last. Yeah the last resort. Yeah. I mean, when you, when your life is in, first of all, everything that is reflected to us in our reality Mm -hmm. is a projection of what's happening on the inside. So if everything is chaotic on the outside, then can you imagine the tsunami shitstorm that's happening on the inside? Yes. So when you see people engaging in, in chaos, creating chaos, as healers, we learn how to have compassion for mm-hmm. those people and, mm-hmm. and hold space for them. But at the same time, we you have to be responsible for that. Like you have to say, okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I need to shift something. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing to me with all of all of the subjects that we've been speaking to and about. Mm-hmm. My thing is like, at what point? Did you ever think to do any self work, any inner work? You know, like what? I guess it's the I guess it's the um, distraction. There's a lot of distraction exactly. in their lives. You yes. know what I mean? Because they are public figures. They're public figures. There's a lot of people around them. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people that are pulling at them, prodding at them. Yeah, go here, go here, there. Do this, do that. Especially for someone like Princess Margaret of that has course. like state duties and never really probably having much time to herself. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. even when she was by herself, maybe feeling 
uncomfortable in that yeah. solitude. Yeah. You know, I think that's part of like her south node in Libra needing to be in relationship. Mm-hmm. But really in this life, she needed to be on her own. Yeah. And taking care of herself and creating healthy boundaries around her from everyone mm-hmm. so that she could focus on herself. Yeah. And so when you talk about like that chaos that people, it's like people are creating their own chaos Mm -hmm. to distract them from the signs that are being shown to them. Yeah. Because those signs require work that maybe the subject doesn't want to do, whether they're even aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. There's something going on subconscious that's saying, I don't want to do that. I'm going to find something to distract myself from that. Well, it's the fear of the unknown, because if I change anything about myself, Mm -hmm. what do I have to give up? And when you think about Princess Margaret, she would have had to give up a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. To Mm -hmm. live the life that she really wanted. The ultimate (laughs) distraction, you know, your royalty. Yeah. That's the ultimate distraction. Yeah. Just the constant attention Mm -hmm. and bling Mm -hmm. and buzz Mm -hmm. and great food and wine and all the it's addictive yeah it's addictive this is yeah you get addicted to the life Mm -hmm. and the and the lights and as a leo son you know she's somebody who is definitely like felt like well i'm supposed to have Mm -hmm. all of this stuff because her son was in the sign of the queen so having the attention, having the riches, the wealth, all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's, and it's, and this is the thing. We're not saying there's anything bad or wrong no. with wealth and fame and notoriety. It's just like with anything else that you do, you have to take that stuff in, in moderation, mm-hmm. you know, like, yes, this is my life, but I always come back to me, to my mm-hmm. soul. You know, mm-hmm. I stay true to my soul. And you can do that. I'd like to dispel the myth that if you are in certain circles and certain levels that you have to sell your soul. No. I don't believe that you have yeah. to do that. No. Um, I believe that there is something... There's ab- people that are not... In, that, they're that not are sovereign. In, <laughs> well, there's people that are in, let's say, not in those elite upper echelon circles yeah. that have sold their soul. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. That, so yeah, and it's a choice. I don't think it's uh if you're in this group you've sold your soul and if yeah. you're in that group you haven't. Yeah. When we're talking about class distinction, I don't exactly. think it works that way. No, it doesn't work that way. It's yeah. a it's a choice. It's a mm-hmm. decision that you make day by day because everybody that is in those elite circles, everyone has not mm-hmm. <laughs> done that. Yeah. Every person hasn't, you know. Yeah, sure. Um so I I just feel like you have to find the happy medium, but you also have to have First of all, the knowledge mm-hmm. and the, the the education to know that that's even possible. Yes. Um, and then you have to believe that it could shift, that your life could be different. And then you have to have the courage to actually do something about it. We talked about this when we were talking about the Kennedys. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, that somebody in the line had sold their family soul. Mm-hmm. To get this power Mm -hmm. and and the people that they, or the entities that they sold it to were like, okay, sure. If you want to give that to us, we'll take it, you know, but they didn't have to, Mm -mm. but they didn't know. It's a, it's a, everything's a choice and a belief system, right? So even the, the gin that is attached to that bloodline, that gin has to be created from a thought. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, everything was created from a thought. You were created from a thought. I was created from a thought. You know, um, was it my thought that created that? Yes. Mm. Yes, mm. it was. I was before I came into this existence, I created me. I decided to it be an expression of that creative energy, right? So when, because I don't think that there's anything outside that is like ruling me, you know, right. it's all within me. So that was a belief that I have to 
go in a, in, to an external source. I think it's external, right? But really, it's an internal creation mm -hmm. that you say, I have to go to an external source that's more powerful than me because I'm not powerful enough to do this on my own, right? Mm -hmm. That's the belief. That's everything that we've been, has been ingrained in us mm -hmm. since the beginning of time, right? Yes. So really what he did was he, uh, you know, tapped into that energy and said, okay, I, I need to get this, you know, I, in order for my family to be safe, in order for, in order for us to have success and wealth, then we got to do this. In order for my troop to be safe, I have to do this, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but that in itself is self-creation. You've you created an energy or an entity and gave it instruction and you programmed it to carry out this particular thing. And because you thought that it was already a dangerous thing, it played out dangerously. dangerously. Okay. So you're saying that if it's your belief that to get X, you have to go through ABC, yeah. then that's what, happens. that's what happens. But if, but if your belief is that I'm abundant and I have everything that I need mm -hmm. and I'm wealthy... And I'm safe. And healthy yeah. and wise and safe. And mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything mm -hmm. to have what is me, what is already me, then that is the frequency that is. Everywhere I am, it, whatever it mm -hmm. is, everywhere I am, it is. It is. Yeah. Because it's my thought, it's yes. my belief, and it's my energy that creates said thing. And so what was Margaret's creation? Well, chaos was the main creation, right? But it wasn't something that, with her, she wanted peace. Mm -hmm. She wanted stability. She wanted that, right? That's mm -hmm. the core desire. That was the dominant desire. However, we become hypnotized and programmed by what happens around us. Mm -hmm. So if all of if, if I'm only seeing you know, I have to be this way to maintain my status, to stay in the family. They're telling me that this was this is what it is. That's my belief system now. So anything that I truly desired, I'm putting that on the back burner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now I am going against myself and I'm creating that inner conflict with myself between the conscious mind, which is saying, we really want peace. We really want love like that's what the heart is desiring mm -hmm. but then the subconscious is programmed with all of this stuff right mm -hmm. program with all of these belief systems that we've picked up from outside so she those two things are were not congruent they mm -hmm. were not in agreement so when the conscious and the subconscious is not in agreement <laughs> mm -hmm. we live in chaos mm. it's the desire versus fear loop that i talked about before i desire this but I'm afraid to do it because I'm going to have to lose something. Mm -hmm. What do I have to give up? And she was thinking that she's going to have to give up her lifestyle yeah. to get what she wanted, which was love. Yeah. Because that is what was ingrained in her through the family dynamic of her uncle. Yep. That was given basically the same choice that Margaret was given. That if you want to be with this person you love, mm -hmm. then you have to be removed from this system that you've been a part of. Yeah. You're no longer Princess Margaret. You're just Margaret. You're just Margaret. And mm -hmm. because he was no longer king, he was just David. And so that's that was his choice. He, he chose love, mm -hmm. so to speak, to be with Wallace Simpson and gave up being a part of that system being the king yeah and so margaret was like okay that's the precedent so she chose the opposite well it just goes back to what you were saying about her being in the sign of the queen right mm -hmm. like that's that was also a desire like mm -hmm. i want this lifestyle mm -hmm. but i also want this yeah how I, and i can't have both because right. they, they said i can't have both right yeah and i've seen evidence that they mm -hmm. can't i can't have both and then charles kind of had the same choice yeah where it's like no you're you're marrying diana mm -hmm. 
you're not marrying Camilla. Mm -hmm. You have to marry Diana. Yep. And so he did like Margaret did and chose the crown Mm -hmm. over true love. He's now got Camilla. Mm -hmm. For whatever happened, you can listen to the Diana episode and hear about that. But And now we've got Harry, who has chosen love, Mm -hmm. let's say, with Mm -hmm. Meghan Markle, Mm -hmm. but has now been kind of pushed out of the royal sphere. Yep. So that's the frequency and the belief system that is involved with their lineage. Yeah, and and the only difference is that they chose to follow their heart. They chose themselves. They chose to just be Harry. You know, what Harry I mean? chose to be his hair, Harry, yeah. but Margaret chose the crown. And ch- yes, the, exactly. But is that her choosing herself, or I don't know. I don't. I don't I th- think so. I don't think so. I don't think. I don't so. think so. I think she, in in a perfect world, she would have had both because it brought her so much turmoil and mm-hmm. grief and and depression, which is why she was smoking like three packs of cigarettes mm-hmm. a day, and she was just waking up drinking and trying to numb the pain, yeah. and just trying to shut up the. Because this is the thing, when you're not walking the light, walking in your purpose, and your purpose could be something as simple as I want to be, I'm I'm a mother and a housewife, and that's my purpose, right? Because mm-hmm. people hear purpose and we think it's supposed to be this huge, extravagant thing. Right. No. But if you're not walking in your purpose and you're not answering that internal soul call, the voices, and I'm speaking from experience, mm-hmm. when you're not doing that, mm-hmm. the voices get loud mm-hmm. and is uncomfortable because you know you're not doing the, the the core desire. The reason why you're here. Yeah, you're not doing it. So everything's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. There is it's an inner conflict. Things just don't work out. You mm-hmm. know, relationships don't work. Money doesn't work or your career doesn't work or you're you're overweight or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just not working. Yeah. <laughs> until you get in alignment, until you finally listen to the voice and you get in alignment and then stuff just starts to fall into place. But with a lot of our subjects, they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Right? right they for some reason they felt they couldn't do it because the weight or the the heaviness of the crown mm-hmm. was just like oh, i gotta stay like this there's no other way mm-hmm. there's no hope yes and the struggle it gets really intense you know so i i agree i don't think that she i don't think that that was her soul she didn't follow and she didn't fall in line with the soul's calling right Yes. It's interesting, though, because then you look at, like, the Queen, or you look at, like, William, Mm -hmm. you know, they seem like they're in the marriages they wanted to be in. Right. So, for whatever reason, they, the frequency that was within them was like, no, I'm going to have both. Mm -hmm. I I love and the crown. Like, what? Like, why Mm -hmm. wouldn't I have both? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I'm going to have both. Mm -hmm. But whatever that gene was passed down to from David to Margaret to Charles to Harry. Yeah. That says you have to choose. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a gene or is it a past life thing that they have to pay out? You know, I I look at that as like the same thing. You know, it's like the gene is the, the past life. It's mm-hmm. a frequency. Mm-hmm. It's something mm-hmm. that their soul carried into this life mm-hmm. for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. they can have that experience to learn whatever they needed to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what's interesting is the day that Margaret died, and I know we'll get into that in a minute, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I mean, the sun was in direct alignment with her North node and her North node. That's the soul's purpose. Mm. That's the to do what I want to do. What's her you know, north her, node? Her north node's in Aries. Okay. Which is the sign that represents the self. Mm-hmm. And it was also in the first house, mm-hmm. which is associated with the first sign, which is Aries. So it was very clearly Aries, Aries. Like this life is for you to do what you want to do, yeah. to be authentic for yourself, to be 
selfish Mm -hmm. for lack of a better word Mm -hmm. because that's a negative word but to think of yourself first to put yourself first the more that margaret would put herself first the more the wider the road through life would be for her yeah the more she thought about well what is this person going to think what is that person going to think what about my sister what about the crown that is narrowing the road for her yeah and on the day she died the sun was in direct alignment with her north node like really shining its light on her soul's purpose Mm. yeah yeah that's deep and mars Mm -hmm. the planet of action the god of war the planetary ruler of the first house and the planetary ruler of aries Mm -hmm was both in Aries, in the first house, just a few degrees away from her north node, her soul's purpose. So being given that drive to follow her soul's purpose and do what she wanted to do. Yeah. And there seemed to be, from my research, a lot of, you know, kind of animosity from Margaret towards Diana. Yeah. Because Diana was kind of going rogue. Mm Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that had to do with Margaret's sort of maybe envy or jealousy of Diana doing what she wanted to do. Absolutely. She said that in the very beginning uh, that she felt like, well, I have, I had to conform. Yeah, she so, should have had to as well. Exactly. She's yeah. like, I didn't, I didn't have anything against her. I just was like, bitch, get in line. Yeah, like, what exactly. are you doing? Like, yeah. we, I, if, if I, I can't had, do what I want to do. You cannot do what you want to do either, you know? Like, so let's get with it. Yes, yes. That's basically what it was. Yeah. It was just like, listen, I'm I'm over here suffering because I can't be my true authentic self mm-hmm. in my own body mm-hmm. because I was born into this family, which was her choice. Yep. That was her choice, yeah. you know? she chose that, yeah, sure. So you are not going to come in here <laughs> mm-hmm. and just do whatever you want and think you're going to be accepted by, you know, that by us. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. So interesting too, because Diana's North Node was in direct alignment with uh, Margaret's North Node. Interesting. Yeah. Diana's North Node is 28 degrees in Leo, Mm -hmm. which is the sign of the queen. Yeah. So Diana, as we said in that episode, it was about, you know, her following her heart but Mm -hmm. being the queen in the karmic bond you know she needed to be sharing and merging power with someone else if it wasn't going to be charles and it needed to be someone else Mm -hmm. and she was kind of all over the map after charles and while she was with charles Mm -hmm. too there was a lot of different men that were coming in and out of her life and so she might have been sharing her magic a little uh frivolously spreading it around which is not what you want to do (laughs) with that north node in the eighth house yeah uh but at 28 degrees in leo that's in direct alignment with margaret's north node Mm -hmm. at 25 degrees in aries that's Mm -hmm. a fire fire connection so you know in in the sort of idealistic way of thinking about it these two women could have been huge supporters for one another in following their soul's path but instead yeah. it seemed like they were kind of at odds with each other mm-hmm. about it so yeah yeah because one was trying to but the other one wasn't and mm-hmm. yeah yeah hmm. absolutely it's just really it's it's kind of sad because it's just like wow what could have been but we keep ourselves in mental prisons where we yes. we tell ourselves these stories that I can't have everything. Mm-hmm. What am I willing to let go of? Like, yeah, you will have to let go of some things. Yes, you will have to sacrifice yes. some things. Are you okay with it? <laughs> yeah. Well, you sacrifice you know. things one way or the other. You do. You know, you I do. mean, either you're sacrificing... There's two paths to go down. Mm -hmm. There's the path that you know, and there's the path that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And if you choose the path that you know, then you sacrifice truly the path that's going to give you everything that you want. Yeah. But 
if you go down the path that you don't know, then you also sacrifice whatever is on the path that you do know. Yeah. But I feel that at least from like the North Node perspective, you are following your soul's purpose mm -hmm. and you sacrifice that other path, you actually end up getting everything that was on that path. So like if you're somebody who is born with the North Node in Aries, by being selfish, you actually get the most amazing relationship that you could ever imagined mm -hmm. because you're taking care of yourself in a very powerful way. And that's going to attract a partner yes. that wants to support you. That's right. In the way that you're supporting yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I look at Charles's North node and it's in Taurus in the 10th house. Taurus is wealth. What is mine, my self-worth and achievement being an authority, I would say that he's following his North Node. Mm -hmm. He's taking care of what's his. Mm -hmm. This is mine. Yeah. It's not yours. And I'm in charge, not you. And so <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It seems yeah. like the men didn't have as hard of a time going after what they wanted. Well, I'm going to look at Harry and see, you know, because Harry's, I feel like he's having a harder time. You know, he's in this position where he wants to be with Meghan Markle. Okay, awesome. That's great. Uh, but at the same time, he's sacrificing his relationship with his family. Yeah. So, you know, that doesn't seem like it's as easy as, you know, it would be more in line, you know, and the same could be said for uh, David, the uncle, Charles's uncle. So, yeah, Harry's Harry's North Node is in Taurus, mm -hmm. like his dad's, mm -hmm. in the fourth house. So that's family. Mm -hmm. That's roots. Mm -hmm. That's upbringing. That's childhood. That's his ancestors. Mm -hmm. So he needs to be focused on his self-worth, mm -hmm. like his dad that this is mine, not yours. Let's be clear about what is mine. He might be merging too much power mm -hmm. with Meghan Markle. Mm -hmm. He needs to keep it separate. Like okay. she has her thing and that's great. And we're together and all of that, but there's a clear divide between what is mine and what is hers. Mm -hmm. That's what Taurus is about. Mm -hmm. The bull says, this is mine. Mm -hmm. You don't come into my space. Now, the fourth house, you could look at it a couple different ways. On one hand, you could say, well, it's in the fourth house. He needs to be focused on his roots, his family, his upbringing, and his past. At the same time, by him being a good father to his children and being maybe kind of like a stay-at-home dad, where it's like, I'm just going to focus on nurturing and caring and being kind to my own mm -hmm. the ones that i've spawned you yeah. know so uh, the more that he's in line with that frequency and just really looking after his children mm -hmm. and making sure that they feel safe and secure i think that will give him uh, the peace that he's looking for gotcha yes okay okay yeah okay so I'm, uh, yeah, I think what I was, what I meant by that was that more of them chose if they decided to go with love, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. they chose it. They just did it. You know, it might've been hard, but they did it. But I'm finding that with Princess Margaret, the freedom to do it wasn't as, I guess it wasn't as, um, she didn't feel free to do it, put it like that. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel free to do that. And I feel like they made that choice and they were just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, I don't care what anybody thinks, you know. Right. Um, so that's what I meant by it seems like more of the men took that step to do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I mean, like when I think about Margaret, you know, for her to like step out on her own. Mm -hmm. In like 1955, yeah. I mean, like you could maybe think about it today where it's like, yeah. she has like a, a baller, uh, TikTok account or something. Right. And she's making like, <laughs> that would be you know, interesting. Just, just making like crazy amounts of money on her TikTok yeah. or, yeah. or IG. Yeah. But like in 1955, like she would have just been like out in the wind. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, like, yeah. okay, well, what are you going to do for a living now? Yeah. You know, yeah. like get a job, like you're going to be a secretary somewhere or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> Think about the, the millions of women who have suffered because of that. Mm-hmm. Just, exactly. You know, like it's 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 just like yeah, they did. Men did have more choices, mm-hmm. out, obviously, um, but the millions of women yeah. who've had to stay in situations we don't really have to now, but they had to stay in situations that were not healthy. They didn't really want to be there. It probably wasn't safe, mm-hmm. and they just had to sit back and just take it. Yeah, man. Yeah, Ugh. I know. Well, I mean, she. Obviously wasn't just sitting around taking stuff, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? She yeah. still had, she did her thing too. Oh yeah, oh know? yeah, yeah. She did her she thing. Was, she was taking what she wanted she to take. She was taking what she wanted to take, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but like her uncle, you know, even him, David, like he, he was like out in the wind, but he had his allowance and he had his wife and everything, but he was a North Node in Aries like Margaret, which is interesting about thinking about himself, putting himself first. And and it's in the second house, which is that Taurus energy. So mm-hmm. that, that seems to be like a theme where you've got Harry and Charles are both the North Node in Taurus. And then David or Edward, the, the eighth, who was briefly the king for not even a year, mm-hmm. He was a second house north node, which is associated with the second sign, which is Taurus. So oh, interesting. Yes. Hmm. So it's about what's mine. Yeah. This is mine, taking care of myself. But then his north node was in Aries, like Margaret. So mm-hmm. putting himself first. And I'm not sure if he did, because mm. he chose to be with Wallace Simpson mm-hmm. as opposed to being the king. Mm-hmm. So he chose the part. I think it's a little different than Margaret's yeah. situation. Yeah. I don't know. It's complicated. Do you think he really wanted to be king? Ah, uh, I think part of him did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, he's a fifth house son. That's associated with the fifth sign, which is Leo. So I think that he thought that he could be king and keep the woman. But then he had to make the choice. And he chose his partner, which I'm not sure if that was the choice he was making for himself. Mm, I see. Okay. I think he was making that choice for them, Mm -hmm. for the two of them together. Okay. We might have to do him but he was, <laughs> find <yeah>. out. <laughs> he was complicated too because he was like sleeping with married women and yeah. like all, he was all over the map. Yeah. Very similar frequency to Margaret, mm-hmm. you know. A lot of the, he'd been with so many different women prior to Wallace Simpson Mm -hmm. and then settled down with her. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. We'd have to do him on another one. But do you want to get to Margaret's passing? Like, where are we at? Yes. Yes. I want to just say one thing that kind of stuck out to me um, Mm -hmm. where she talks about um, how. Just kind of tying back into, you know, why she would choose to be in a relationship with Tony and Mm -hmm. to deal with everything that she dealt with um, and to participate in things that she participated in because we can't put it all on him, (laughs) right? Yeah. But what she said was that their relationship uh, caused her to do a lot of uh, self-reflection and introspection. Mm -hmm. Um, And she said, you know, like a part of me felt that this was normal because this is what I had seen my entire life. You know, I grew up around dysfunction in romantic partnerships because that's what royals do. We cannot be claimed. We cannot be pinned down to one person. The whole world wants a part of us. They want to have a piece of us, and we feel entitled to also have a piece of everything, which I find very interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, we we feel entitled to have a piece of everything that we Sounds want. Like the mob, I know. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> um, hmm. everything that we want and see, and so we do that. And monogamy and fidelity is ideal, but it is not protocol. Hmm. But a part of her said that she, you know, of course, she craved that ideal relationship. Uh, somebody who worshipped her. 
but she never thought that it was possible because she'd never really seen that. And I mean, I guess even with her parents, I don't think the queen stepped out. I'm not sure if she did or not, Mm -hmm. but I know her husband definitely did. You think Margaret's dad was stepping out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the king? Yeah. Okay. You don't think so? I don't know. The king? Wait, Margaret's dad? You know, I just I just think about the way he was portrayed in the crown. Yeah. You know, just like this stuttering guy that's uh you know, been portrayed in Hollywood. He had a yeah. stutter and and mm-hmm. you know, he was he wasn't supposed to be king and he was, you know, just really a a good guy, you know, that mm-hmm. wanted a quiet yeah, the life. The good guys with are his, the ones that really <laughs> stick it to you good. Let me tell you. Family, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> It's harder for me to think of him as like the baller out there just because of the way he's portrayed in Hollywood. Right. You know what that means, whatever. Yeah. So, well, I will say this I will say that I haven't done any direct work on him or seen anything specific, Mm -hmm. but she's saying that she grew up seeing things. Okay. Okay. So I'm just. Wondering. Okay, well, let me let so, me look at the astrology real quick. Okay, and just uh, you know, first of all, he's a Sagittarius sun, mm-hmm. which is the sign of freedom. Yeah. You know, when, I, when I think of Sagittarius, <laughs> I think of like Burning Man. Yeah. You know, a bunch of people running naked in the desert. You know, dancing yeah. around the fire. I've dealt with some Sagittarius <laughs> men, and so, they yeah. Okay. So, but he's also a second house sun. He's, you know, so the sun, Mercury, Mars are all in Sagittarius, which tells me freedom lover, but he's a second house sun, Mercury and Mars. And the second house is associated with the second sign, which is Taurus, which is about, you know, being stable Mm -hmm. and, and being, you know, somebody who is very loyal. So he's also in a Scorpio moon. So, you know, Scorpio is the deepest, darkest, most passionate sign. And so, you know, that Scorpio moon is also very loyal, like Taurus. Yeah. So, so, you know, there's indications that there's a lot of loyalty for her father, but also an urge for freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, His, Venus was in the first house, Mm -hmm. again, first house associated with the first sign, which is Aries, also in Scorpio. So that tells me a couple of things. Like Venus in the first house, that's somebody who's like quick to love, Mm -hmm. ardent in love. Mm -hmm. And I think if you read back about his relationship with his wife, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's mother, uh, you know, he was after her, like, and he wanted her, like he would, he really pursued her. Um, and he got married, you know, before his brother did, Mm -hmm. uh, the one who was king Mm -hmm. before him. Now the Scorpio energy, there is a secretness to the love nature. There's it's hidden. There's something hidden about it. So, you know, that could mean maybe there's some kind of something going on in the shadows. Yeah. And it's quick and yeah. it's, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm picking up on. Yeah. I'm picking up on there's something there. Yeah. It's something mm-hmm. that happened. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know, but something happened. <laughs> and he's a Libra rising. So, yeah. you know, very charming. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to really kind of read the Libra rising people sometimes because mm-hmm. they're, they're so just measured and graceful and they don't seem like they're going to do anything that's, you know, beneath the board right because they're very classy Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 okay Hmm. so (laughs) yes i mean she knows she would know better than me either us and you so uh she just keeps her word for it i'm gonna take her word for it (laughs) there are things going on somebody was somebody was doing something (laughs) but um so basically she's saying the same thing that we we just got finished talking about and we'll get into her health in a minute but i just kind of wanted to to bring that up um you know that she never really found that balance between desiring something uh that you feel is totally impossible and living the life of chaotic adventure you know that's just 
that's just where she was, you know. Um, but she said it made her strong. And it made all of them strong. And in the end, we were victorious because her and Tony remained really great friends afterwards. Mm-hmm. They were very close. Um, and they had a deep, profound respect for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, I, I've always had respect for him. And I've always had love for him. We were really good friends, even though they, you know, went through what they went through. They probably shouldn't have been married. They probably just should have been buddies, buddies, you know. But again, she hopped into that relationship off of the back of the pain that she was feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, around Peter. Um, And she's grateful for her children. Mm. You know, she's grateful for her children. Absolutely. Um, That's that's that was the the blessing out of that, and you know. We know how that goes. The children choose their parents. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's the kids' souls that bring the parents, the people together, together exactly. even though it may not be yes. the best relationship. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about her health. Yeah. Go for it. So she had some things, quite a few things going on with her. The first thing, of course, is the substance abuse, right? And so I like to talk about what the the emotional, spiritual tie to that is. Mm-hmm. And it's escapism, as mm-hmm. we already know, mm-hmm. numbing pain. Yep. Being closed off to one's true self, not living the life that you want, coping with disappointment, anxiety, stress, depression, mm-hmm. which was all of the above is what she was dealing with, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then the smoking. It's you're you're seeking relaxation. Mm-hmm. You're looking for a break when you're smoking, right? Because yeah. you're taking a deep breath mm-hmm. and then exhaling, yeah. right? Yeah. And most people don't know to stop throughout the day and just do that. Exactly. So the only time they get to do that is if they smoke. Exactly. It, you t- know? it brings you back into the moment. Of exactly. Just being present. And yeah. That's what it is. That's what it when is. When you smoke, you're present. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about your problems. You're just focused on. That cigarette. You get moments of clarity. Yeah. I know when I exactly. used to smoke, totally. Same I would here. go take a smoke break and I would just have ideas, like totally. moments of clarity. Like, oh shit, that's yes. what I need to do. Exactly. You know, if I was writing something or working on something, it would just bring in those moments of clarity that's for me because you're old, relaxed. Totally. That's what my old writing partner and I used to do all the time. Whenever we'd feel stuck yeah. in whatever we were writing, we'd go out to the balcony, light up, and all of a sudden it's like, I got it. We got the idea. Yeah. We know it now because yeah. your mind is coherent. Absolutely. Yeah. You're in flow. You're, you're in relaxed. Flow. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you know, you're taking deep breaths mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's what brings those yes. clear, that those clarified moments. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, there is also a distraction and a pattern interruption to quiet the mind, which is what we just talked about um, and allows time to organize the thoughts. So it puts you in a hypnotic state because mm-hmm. that's what hypnosis is. Yes. Hypnosis is you organizing your thoughts Um, from a clarified space Mm -hmm. so that you are able to create the next step Yes. or whatever the reality that is that you're wanting to create. Mm -hmm. So that's the smoking. Of course, these things affected her body, right? So we have lung issues. She had to get a piece of her lung removed. Mm. Um, So any issues with the lungs has to deal with deep emotions, Mm -hmm. grief, um, sadness, drowning in mm-hmm. sadness, um, suffering from loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's really interesting that the very thing that she was going after smoking, mm-hmm. right, was also having a huge impact on the the lungs, right, yes. which is where you're holding those those that grief, that sadness, and yes. it's, it's like you're drowning. Mm-hmm. You know. So that that's very interesting. And then finally, the stroke. So strokes come on from physical exertion Mm -hmm. when we're not giving ourselves enough rest, we're not sleeping well, Um, anger, Mm -hmm. stress, emotional upset. Um, Around that time, she had to sell her home. She had to quit drinking. She had to quit smoking. All of the stuff that brought her comfort was basically stripped away. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, there's that, I'm losing control. So the body literally loses control and goes into convulsion. And that's where the the stroke came in. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, the the lungs are ruled by 
Gemini, mm. which is ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication. Mm -hmm. In order to communicate, you have to breathe, fill up your lungs, and then say what you need to say. Mars, the god of war, was in Gemini in her third house, which is associated with the third sign, which is Gemini. Mm. It was also at the exact same degree in alignment with her north node, which we've been talking about a lot. So it's like the inhale of that cigarette and the exhale was her little way of doing what she wanted mm -hmm. to do, following her north node maybe. Yeah. But that's not really what she wanted to be doing. That was just like her own little sort of rebellious. Her power play. Yeah, her mm -hmm. power play. Mm -hmm. So, but really Mars was pushing her to, you know, to be more explorative, you know, if that's a word, like, you know, uh, learning about different people, connecting to different people, but exerting her own will and power through her thoughts yeah. and her words. And so by maybe silencing herself too much, the cigarettes were, what's the right word? Well, it's an oral fixation. Mm -hmm. And so if you aren't, a lot of people who have issues with their throat chakra yes. will, be, will be smokers because mm -hmm. they're not fully speaking their truth. Yes, yes. Or you can't. Mm -hmm. You have to shut it down. Yeah, exactly. So you have to do something with your mouth. Right. Yeah. Hmm. But the alcohol, you know, that's a tougher one. I mean, Neptune isn't afflicting any planets here, uh, though it is in her sixth house, which is the house that rules the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the planet of the unconscious. And her sun and her Mercury are there. So she's really thinking a lot, a very active mind. And maybe to quiet the mind is where the alcohol yeah. and cigarettes came in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Big time. Mm -hmm. Escaping. Yeah. She needed to escape. Yeah. Escapism, a part of her daily life. Mm -hmm. That's Neptune in the sixth house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And in Virgo. So, which is also six house energy, mm -hmm. daily routine. Yeah. Escapism. Yeah. Hmm. And then it turns into a program because uh, you do it so much, yes. you know, the repetition tied to the intense emotional, mm -hmm. you know, feelings that are happening. Yes. Um, and it's a coping mechanism. And so it just, then it turns into habit, mm -hmm. you know, um, Wow. Yeah, I know, right? It's on, on the day that she passed also, I was saying how the sun was in alignment with her north node and Mars in alignment with her north node, yeah. giving like kind of that last desperate call of like, mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Do what's right for you. Who screw everyone else? Yeah. On that same day, the north node was conjunct mm -hmm. at the same degree as her Mars and also in alignment with her North Node. Yeah. So she was getting the transiting Mars connecting to her North Node, the transiting North Node connecting to her Mars. Both of those are action to follow your soul's purpose. Mm -hmm. And then the sun bringing vitality there as well. So I feel like Margaret had like leading up to her death had a lot to say a lot to do yeah uh but you know was past the point of no return didn't know how to do what she wanted to do or say what she wanted to say mars was also squaring her pluto so pluto's the god of death mm -hmm. and mars is the god of war and squaring off that is a very powerful uh alignment uh, very intense. That's a powerful way to go out. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Intense. Yeah. Very intense. Do you think she was fighting, still fighting against doing what she truly wanted to do, like on a soul level? Like, was there, but because that's a very interesting um, 
lineup mm-hmm. on the day that she passed. Yeah, I mean, in addition to that, there was Uranus, the planet of rebellion. Yeah. And revolution was also in alignment with her Mars action and her North Node, soul's purpose. Chiron, the wound, was conjunct Saturn, yes. the authority. So I think that she probably was fighting it. And her exit strategy was just death. Hmm. You know, that yeah. was that was the that way was the to choice. stop fighting. The way to stop fighting was to just keep fighting until, like, <laughs> fighting what she was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like, the more she did that, the closer, the easier it would be for her to just die. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I know that she says, like, her message you yeah, know, what was her message to, um, for all of us? Always be present and find peace in the present. Okay. And so I feel like that's something that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. You know, if I can't like fighting against what I'm what I'm supposed to do, the more you find peace in the present moment, the easier it is for you to move more towards your soul's calling, your your purpose, the desire of your heart, because you're not worrying about what's going to happen if I do it. Mm-hmm. You're just returning back to the present and finding peace in that moment, like second by second, moment by moment, millisecond by millisecond, you know, um, and that eventually just becomes practice, right? It just becomes habit like everything else. So... I feel like if she would have done that, eventually she would have gotten to a space of not giving a fuck. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, Finding peace in the present means like, yeah, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what other people are going to say because I'm peaceful. That's right. And if they're not going to be peaceful because of what I do, Mm -hmm. then that's their issue. That's their issue. Yeah. It's not mine. Absolutely. You release the the guilt and the shame because you don't have time to think about it because you're in the present. Exactly. (laughs) I don't have time to think about being guilty, being shameful, being embarrassed or outcasted because I'm here. That's a future possibility. And that's what the cigarette smoking is about, was trying to be peaceful in the present moment. It's for a moment of peace in the present. But it's it's false. Mm -hmm. She smoked like three packs a day. Wow. I had to take a deep breath after that because yeah. that's, I mean, as a smoker, I don't, I think I was smoking like maybe a half a pack a day. Yeah. And that shit's a lot, you yeah, know, so totally. I can't even imagine. I know. It's, three packs. It's, I can't imagine. And especially the type of cigarettes mm. she was probably smoking too. Yeah. You know, probably <sighs> harsh. Very harsh. Yeah. 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 It's like a punishment. It is a punishment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's like, it, I mean, anything that you do in excess is a punishment. Is her soul back on earth uh, in physical form? I'm not feeling that. No. I'm not feeling. No, it's not. Okay. I see her shaking her head now. Okay. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. She's, I feel like she's at peace right now. Okay, good. Um, I don't feel like there's any, he- I don't feel any heaviness. Okay, I just, good. but I do feel like there's still lessons that she's yeah. learning on the other side. So mm-hmm. she hasn't quite come back over here. By the way, you don't have to come back here mm-hmm. for those listening. That's a choice. Yeah. Just like you can, you can, you can manifest the way you leave this place too. If you really want to harness your true sovereign power, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can mm-hmm. manifest everything else. Yeah. Why can't you visualize how you'll leave yes. this, this, this plane, you know, but if she chooses to come back, she could, mm-hmm. I don't know if she wants to, mm-hmm. but I think right now she's still doing some healing, Yeah, but she's at peace. She's Good. at peace, but she's still healing. Well, I'm great. Very grateful for yes. her. For her wisdom yeah, that she shared too. with us here. Fascinating individual. Mm-hmm. Very complex. Mm-hmm. But yes, grateful and grateful for you, yeah. Shara. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Thank grateful you for, for you, too. Yes. Yes. Very grateful for you to, to <laughs> help bring all of this stuff together because yes. sometimes I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. This, this is what I'm getting. I'm picking up on this, but I yeah. don't know if this is... <laughs> mm. 
you know, accurate. I mean, we still don't know how accurate all of this stuff is. Only the people involved really know. Um, But I'm just grateful for the lessons that come through in these conversations because this is deeper than us just, you know, tapping in and reading about their juicy lives, you know. No, there's... This is, this is, this is work to elevate the planet you know there's valuable lessons so. here whether however accurate you and i are actually being with the yeah information and the facts yeah there's so much wisdom in what's being shared here mm-hmm. i also want to just say before we wrap up that i should have mentioned this earlier but it's interesting to me because margaret's son is at 28 degrees in leo and diana's north node was at 28 degrees in Leo. Mm. So there's some kind of karmic wow, connection between the two of them. Yeah. Uh, and following the soul's purpose and sovereignty and the self and all those sorts of things. So uh, I think that maybe Diana might have looked at Margaret as like an example for. I was, good, I was just getting ready to say, I yeah. feel like Margaret also saw herself in yeah. Diana. But was pissed because she was like, "You're uh-huh. you need to fall in line. Yeah, listen, exactly. if you really want this to work out for you, you know. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Wow. Right. Okay. Hmm. But Diana was like, I don't know, got some sort of inspiration, whether it was doing different from Margaret or harnessing that spirit and doing her own thing, whatever it was. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, there's something there between the two of them. So. Beautiful. Well, yes. I hope that they are dancing with each other up yeah. there or wherever they are. I don't know. Is it up there? Is it over there? Is it <laughs> down right, here? Is it right, right here? Right, here <laughs> right, right next to our table. We can't here. even see it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> exactly. right there. Whatever. I don't know what heaven or hell looks like. You know, that's, that's up to everyone. That's up to each person. So, yes. Yes, indeed. But this has been awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Shara. Thank you, Scott. And thank you to all of our subjects that we've talked about this yes. season and yeah. thank you to our listeners absolutely all right shara all right until next time yes indeed you've been listening to the uncharted territories where we see the unseen in the world of matter if you would like to support the podcast subscribe we've talked a lot about the subconscious mind and the importance of healing our wounds from the past As an energy healer and a certified hypnotherapist, I help people understand how the mind works so they can harness the energy of the subconscious and tap into their inner power and make those positive long-term changes in their lives. If you're ready to make that change, you can book a session with me by connecting at opendoorhypnosis.com. I look forward to working with you. If you'd like to learn more about who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and what you're meant to do with your life, contact me, Scott Tajarian, at theweeklytransit.com, and we will take a close, detailed look at your astrological code. My purpose is to help you understand who you are so you can accept, appreciate, and love the divine, unique miracle that is you.